Hello, everyone, and welcome to our online meetup today. My name is Helen, and I'll be your host. I'm delighted to welcome three outstanding specialists in the field of embedded systems to our meeting today. So without further ado, let me introduce them. First up is Dr. Wang Ren, an Open Euler Embedded Operating System Architect. He will be giving his topic on Open Euler Embedded, a Linux-centric comprehensive embedded software platform. And second, we have Jia Gong, an associate professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Software. Today, he will discuss how RISC-V provides a new uh, possibility for AIoT. And finally, we have Han, who is a PhD student at the University of Exeter. His research focuses on embedded deep learning security. He worked as an embedded system software engineer at RT Thread before rolling at the University of Exeter. He will present his topic on RT Thread operating system later. So uh, let us begin the presentations. Now that we have introduced our guests, each speaker will have their own time slot to discuss their respective topics. And after all the presentations, we'll have a free discussion session during which we will ask a few questions and let our guests to freely express their thoughts and ideas. So uh, first, Dr. Wang, it's your time now. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay, okay you should uh, stop your sharing uh, first. Then yeah, I can share my screen. Okay. Okay, wait a moment. So, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so, so hi everyone. And I'm Warren from Open Oil Community in Huawei. So glad to be here to introduce Open Oil Embedded. And also thank, thank you for other presenters. I think that uh, it's a very good opportunity to introduce uh, the situation and the, the result of Chinese open source platform, including embedded Linux, real-time working system, the risk file to the world to the world. Okay, so I just begin. So my presentation today is open oil embedded, uh Linux centric comprehensive embedded software platform. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, I want to make a formal brief introduction first. Now, now I'm working in Huawei as an embedded OS technical expert. Uh, that, that's my job title. So my main work now is around Open Oil, a Linux-based OS platform and the community. And I'm the member of Open Oil technical community and responsible for the embedded scenario and uh, the maintainer of SIG Yakto and SIG Zephyr. Uh, clear, I think, means a special interest group. I'm also the architect of Open Oil Embedded, uh, which is a embedded Linux distribution based on Open Oil community. So before I joined Huawei, I was in Synopsis Wuhan R&D Center, worked on worked on the embedded system software for Synopsis Design Well Arc Processor. And uh, in university, I started my career in embedded system as a PhD student. Okay. So next is my agenda of, of my work, my talk today. First, I still want to make a brief introduction of the orientation of Open Euler. And then the Open Euler embedded, the extension of Open Euler on embedded scenario, including what it is, the general architecture, key features, etc. And here I want to make a further discussion of a, a very important key feature of Open Euler embedded, so the OS, Mix criticality deployment, we call it Mika. Okay, so still some time to introduce about uh, Open Euler. So, what is Open Euler? Open Euler is a mainly Linux kernel based unified OS distribution platform. And it is initially founded by Huawei in 2019 and later donated to the Open Atom Foundation in the September of 20, uh, 2021. Yeah. Uh, Open Euler are similar to other communities like Debian aims to be a top upstream platform. As we know, there are a lot of mm, sub platforms or distributions derived from Debian, for example, the Ubuntu. And Debian and Debian. Debian variants 
are widely used in areas like desktop, embedded server, edge, etc. And, and until now, uh, of Euler also covers four main scenarios, server, cloud, edge, and embedded. And well, server and cloud are supported at the beginning, and edge and the embedded are added in, uh, in the September of 2021. So in Open Euler, all four scenarios share the same um, same package repo, e.g., for example, the same kernel and other software components like GLFC, Linux utilities, OpenSSL, and even the CVEs. So all, all package repos are maintained in Kiki, a platform like GitHub, and have, we also have mirrors in, uh, in GitHub. So different scenario OS are created are created and released through the composed different composed system like OBS, Yakto, and other tools. So next, the architecture of Open Euler. What uh, Open Euler is open OS platform supports multiple architectures. You can find diverse computing architectures with peer, like ARM, x86, RISC-V, Tor, Long Arc, which is a, a Chinese uh, architecture has some relations to the MIPS at, at its early stage in the SW64, also a Chinese architecture, and has some relations to the DEC Alpha architecture. So around the supported architectures, you can find uh, a lot of chip vendors. Some are international companies like Intel, AMD, SUSE, and uh, recently we have Marvel, but more are Chinese vendors like uh, Quimpeng, Fate, and Rust, uh, Starfire, Nuclei. So, uh, in the all supported architectures, um, ARM64 and x 18664 are Intel 1. So you should know that of Euler starts from server and cloud area. So these two arch architectures are widely used in server and cloud area. But but for other other type, other architectures, don't worry. The quality of support of other architectures is being improved as more and more for showing. Especially for risk five. Okay. As I said before, uh, as I said before, okay. In Open Euler, all four scenarios show everything that can be shown, like uh, kernel, software package, and infrastructure. So, and we do cooperative development of one of the set, one set of code and the release of four images for, for all scenarios. Besides the original codes coming from upstream, Open Euler also does a lot of innovations. In kernel, currently Open Euler has a, a 5.10 kernel as a base. Now, and the, in this year, we extend to the 6.x kernel. And does a lot of characteristic work in file system, scheduling, memory, reliability. So meanwhile, considering the different requirements of different scenarios, Different features are developed. For example, uh, the isolat the is, uh, is a lightweight container aid container engine, and which is written in C language. Strato Virtual 2.0 is also a lightweight virtualization tool like Cumul. Uh, uh, and especially in embedded scenario, we have uh, uh, mixed correct identity and cooperative with Zephyr for our operating system and the real-time enhancement, soft pass. And these features, I will make a uh, uh, further introduction later in, in, uh, in Open OER Embedded. Okay, ecosystem. So after three, more than three years, and Open OER grows to a, a, a vibrant community. And in China, Open OER is the number one Open OS community. So I want to show some statics about Open Euler until this month. So in users, there are more over a million users download and use Open Euler image. And the contributors, more than, I mean, 13,000. Uh, organization members, almost uh, 800. And the SIG, 99, repos, over 9,500. And the loss of PRs, issues, comments, and these numbers are updated and changed every day. So, but however, compared with other uh, worldwide mercurial communities like Debian, Red Hat, Open Oil is still very young and has a lot of work to do to fulfill, fulfill its goal. And for more information, 
you can scan the QR code at the right corner for more information. So this is a, a brief introduction of open Euler. And now I want to make an introduction of open Euler embedded. So in the September of 2021, uh, OpenOiler was up upgraded to a uh, ubiquitous OS platform for the digital infrastructure. Uh, two new scenarios are covered, edge and embedded. So uh, although OpenOiler embedded is very young, just maybe uh, uh, more than one, one year, some part, but some part come from the current year, but, but it has a, a, a strong background. Some part comes from the solid base of over oil community, and some part coming from the current the leading force of over oil embedded uh, Huawei, which is also my working company. So, okay, let's go to the open oil embedded. And open oil, as I said, is a Linux centric, high quality, open, comprehensive embedded platform. This is our definitions. So I want to make an explanation about these definitions. As we know that uh, one hand uh, in, in embedded system, Linux is, is becoming more and more popular because, because the, the, the embedded system are becoming uh, more and more complex. For example, more and more requirement on connectivities, smarter embedded AI. So, so it requires a, a rich feature OS like Linux. So, but on the other hand, as we know that uh, in embedded systems, Linux is not the one, it, because it cannot meet all requirements like uh, uh, all the requirements of an embedded system, like real time, hard, especially hard real time, safety, low power, which are the field of RPOS like RD threat. And even, even in some embedded systems, the bare metal runtime is still used. So therefore we define open OER embedded, uh, 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 Linux centric comprehensive uh, embedded soft platform, which means that uh, Linux is important and necessary, but not everything. So this is a, a chart about Open Euler's uh, uh, general view overview. So in our view, Open Euler embedded is just like a solar system, and uh, the embedded Linux, which mean which is Open Euler embedded, is the sun, and the, the planets are different uh, embedded software components like. Uh, uh, Atos, like a key environment, like a bare metal, like the embedded uh, virtualizations. At the sun, the, at the sun of solar systems, uh, open oil embedded provides uh, the uh, the gravity to attract uh, the other embedded software components, like uh, rich features, like uh, ecosystem, like uh, uh, some some key features, like, for example, the mixed critical reality system, like the distributed software bus. And so, and then different planets like Atos provides their own and unique characteristic features and ecosystem. For example, if you want to real time, if you want uh, the hard real time, you should, you can choose a uh, 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 real time operating system like uh, Artistrad, like Zephyr. So if you want to have uh, good information security, so you can choose uh, choose the trust firmware, and if you want to low power, and uh, you can choose bare metal, right? And if you want to, if you want the strong isolation and the better utilization of resources, and you can choose embedded virtualization. Okay, so uh, next. Uh, I want to go further to, to describe the architecture of open oil embedded. So this blue part is the scope of open oil embedded. Uh, in runtime above the hardware uh, is a, a component called embedded flexible foundation, and uh, which is a, co a collection of different technology like uh, virtualizations, like uh, key, like containers, and, and even others. So the main work of this component is to provide strong isolation above, of above OS at runtimes and the low level management of physical resources. Then above it is the Linux kernel and the real-time operating system like uh, Zephyr and Artist Threat. Uh, and in kernel, although open OER embedded uh, shares common Linux kernel with other scenarios like uh, 
edge like a uh, server, like a cloud. It and OpenOida will do some specific calculations, patch optimization, and other 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 approach according to the requirements of the embedded system. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we we will apply the real time preempt patch for the kernel, and we will do fine grained configuration, and we will try to to implement the best uh, optimization of memory footprint. So uh, this is for the Linux kernel part, and uh, there but in the Arcos part, there's no standard options like Linux. And here, we already have some well-known Arcos as open oil or embedded script partners. For example, we, we, we have cooperation with Artisred in China, and we have cooperation with Zephyr in worldwide. And we, and, and to try to integrate Linux and the other components, we developed the technology named Mika, which name which is a which means okay okay which means a uh, mixed critical RDT framework to integrate uh, open oil embedded atos and the and the soft bus is a network technology connection to connect uh, uh, different devices in local network. It comes from, and, and this, in fact, this technology uh, comes from the Open Harmony, which is a broader uh, community of Open Euler. And we work with Open Harmony community to port uh, this technology to Open Euler to connect and try to connect the Open Euler and Open Harmony ecosystems. Uh, so this is called long time of Open Euler. So about the application, about the application, so the typical application fields of open oil are uh, industrial Internet of Things like the programming logic con controllers, like robots, and like energy, okay, uh, which are typical usage of uh, industry control. Okay, so we so we want to build a solid common base to track the users' vendors to construct. Uh, the application about open oil embedded with application space know how. Okay, next about the DF, DFX because of the limited resources, it's not easy to do work like uh, uh, debug, trace, uh, performance optimizations in embedded system as we do similar work in other areas like a PC server. So we have so the, therefore the DFX system here. I mean DFX means design for X. X can be uh, uh, debug, perform, debug, uh, trace, and uh, is a, uh, I mean that is a focus of open online embedded. We want to improve the developer experience of embedded Linux through through a good, I mean DFX systems. And besides uh, runtime, uh, the infrastructure, including tools, build system, and the CI/CD is a very important and uh, a critical part of open online embedded. Uh, the infrastructure is not shiny at uh, runtime features, but it's the backbone of a good platform and it supports our daily work. Okay, this is Open Euler. Next, I want to make an uh, introduction about the key features of Open Euler Embedded. I mean, the key features of Open Euler Embedded can be summarized as one plus X plus one. I mean, the two ones are the invariant key features. I mean, embedded Linux framework and the infrastructure. Uh, uh, these two key features are the two legs to support the open oil embedded. And uh, for, for Linux, uh, we are devoted to build a high quality embedded Linux framework. And we use, uh, as I said before, we use the same Linux kernel with other scenarios like uh, cloud server. And we also maintain the software package Based on community, uh, based on community for the embedded scenario, like uh, for example, the Isula, a C-based lightweight, lightweight container, and we we use Qt to add the solution for GUI and other uh, a lot of core utilities and the software packages. And as I I want to I want to repeat here, we will do specific configurations patch. And optimization according to the requirements of embedded system in Linux. And okay, next about infrastructure. Uh, to be a mature and a successful platform, 
and the infrastructure is a very, very important. I mean, it's just like the iceberg below the sea. And uh, uh, as I said, maybe not shiny at wrong type features. And so, uh, so from the bottom to up, I mean, Compass CI is a cloud native IT infrastructure. Its, it's work, its feature is something like Jenkins and the GitHub, or GitHub's action flow. And we built the core system of OpenOILA infrastructure above it, like a CI CD test and other other key functions. And the all open, all, as I said at the beginning, all OpenOILA source codes, kernel software package are maintained in Kiki and uh, half a million in GitHub. And uh, for the build system, build framework, we, we use the Yakto as the core build system of over oil embedded. And it's different with other scenarios where LBS, I mean, it means open build system is used. And the Yakto, I want to say that is a very popular build system for embedded Linux distributions. And the Yakto is widely used by a lot of companies and communities in worldwide, like Intel, Huawei, NXP, like the, like the project of automotive great Linux. And uh, uh, I want to say that besides embracing the good ecosystem of uh, Yakto, uh, we also did a lot of customization and optimization according to open oilers need. And, and for CICDs, we already set up a basic CICD workflow that covering the PR check, build, and the test. But I have to admit that uh, uh, it's still very simple. It needs a lot of work to improve. And OK, uh, next about the X features. Now, in currently, in X, we have uh, two key features. And uh, at the bottom is the soft bus. And the uh, uh, soft bus, which also you can call it a distribute soft bus, is a correction of a, uh, networking technology, I mean, coming from OpenHami. And it's designed to simplify the connection and the management of node devices. Uh, it's already widely used uh, in consumer electronics in OpenHami community. And uh, here, as I said, uh, we worked with OpenHami communities to port uh, most of features of uh, uh, SoftBus to OpenOILA. And we want to use Open, uh, the so soft bus to interconnect open oil ecosystem and open harmony ecosystems. Okay, uh, the, gem, the main job of soft bus is first how to detect and connection of device, then the interoperation of devices and the further the resource sharing like uh, computing power, storage and uh, human machine interface, something like this. And uh, through soft bus, we can easily connect open oiler and open oiler device and the open oiler and open harmony device in a unified and scalable way. Uh, above soft bus is, is uh, the mixed critical additive framework we, we name it Mika, uh, uh, which is targeted for the middle core system on chip in, in by system. For, for the details of Mika, I will introduce the, in my final section, so I just skip it. I mean, at, at, at the top, besides soft bus and Mika, we are also continue, continuing to in, incubate new features. I mean, facing, oh, sorry. I mean, facing new technology, new trend, and new scenarios like uh, here. Trustworthy is a general word, may, maybe which covers security, safety, reliability, and uh, ROS, a robotic operating system. And uh, we are trying to support lightweight robotic ROS environment in open oil embedded and the embedded AI, which is so hot today in the Rust, right? Rust, okay. Next, uh, uh, I want to uh, use the running model of open oil embedded. And uh, currently we define four running models for open oil embedded. Uh, number one, single model. Is the most uh, typical usage of embedded Linux. I mean, the example hardware target is Raspberry Pi 4. And in this model, all features are, are implemented above uh, Linux. So you can get rich features, rich ecosystems. But uh, for this model, the cons is there are no guarantees for 
hard real time and the safety and the low power and the other features because that's because Linux kernel is uh, not designed for these goals. These are these are the goals of uh, operating system, real time operating system, right? So then we have the uh, second model, uh, AMP model. Uh, clear AMP means asymmetric multi processor. Yeah. So uh, in AMP model, so we have Open Euler, embedded uh, Linux, and Atos running together, and the system bosses are static allo allocated, and uh, it, it supports heterogeneous uh, architecture. Here we we also have an example targeted, the ST Micros uh, hardware, which where you can find the two Cortex A7 cores and uh, one uh, Cortex M micro microcontroller, which is for which is for the Atos. But for this model. And there are also cons. The cons are, you know, that uh, there are no strong isolation between uh, Linux at all. If if once one component, for example, Linux corrupt, it may have impact or severe impact on at all side. So to so so uh, improvement enhancement of AMP model is we is a model we call virtualization virtualization model virtualized model. So. Uh, you can see that the, in this model, we add a new component, the hypervisor, which is based on the hardware assisted virtualization technology. So uh, this hypervisor provides strong hardware isolation between uh, open oil embedded and ATOS. And so resource can be dyna dynamic allocated, it's very flexible. But uh, for this model, they are, uh, it's very good, but they also have cons because, because uh, as we know that uh, uh, it has poor support of a heterogeneous hardware because, if, for example, if we have uh, uh, ARM architecture and risk fight architecture together, uh, current uh, virtualization technology cannot cover both two architectures. So, so for this case, uh, it is the final model, uh, Fusion model, which is a very complex system. I mean, here, the example hardware target is the is a heterogeneous multi-core hardware like a settings settings ultra scale where you can find four quarters a cores uh, two quarters r cores for real time control you have apga for the for the for a hardware acceleration and io and uh, in in this model and in this uh, hardware we will have multiple runtime hypervisor based on the arm Arms uh, virtualizing technology and uh, by our hypervisor, you, we can have uh, Linux and Atos, and then we also have Atos running in a heterogeneous uh, uh, architecture like uh, Cortex R core and even in the FPGA. So, so you can see that it's uh, it's very complex. Also, also there are also the cons of this model. I mean, huge complexity of software. In fact, this for this model, I mean, the general architecture. Is still evolving, right? Uh, and uh, I want to say that uh, in all for in all the forms of open oil embedded, and the uh, open oil embedded are centric. It's always are centric. Provides rich features and the rich management and the rich ecosystems. Okay, this is next. Uh, okay, let's see what's new in the coming open oil embedded. I mean, uh, the next release is. Uh, uh, 2303 March, yes. So here is a brief review in, in infrastructure. I mean that which is not so shiny at runtime features. We will have more doctor meta layers like the meta open embedded, meta Python, and then other layers, which means that you can you can easily add more features in your product embedded. And then we will have we will provide a better native SDK to accelerate the build. And uh, in this release, we will have a uh, uh, innovation. I mean, a tool named OE Build, which is a, a meta tool for open oil embedded. We want to use this tool to simplify the development of uh, open oil embedded. And uh, we will improve our CI CD system and try to set up a basic test framework. And of course, we will have more developer, developers to contribute in this release. And in this framework, okay, we will have close sync up with uh, the other seek like kernel seek. And we will try to do some preparation for the new coming 6.1 6.1 kernel, which is the latest uh, LTS kernel of our Linux community. 
and we will have more architecture support. Like uh, in this release, we will have official support of x86, and we will have support for risk five. And uh, for the soft package, and uh, we will double our current numbers, which means that we will support it more than 215 uh, soft package in open OI embedded. And uh, we will have the QT support, and we will have better TFX, and uh, we will also do optimization in memory footprint and put up speed. And for the Mika, and we will have better lab management service. And uh, we also start the exploration for heterogeneous hardware. And in fact, we already implemented uh, the mixed uh, uh, multi OS development in the STM 13.2 hardware. And uh, we will have more ATOS partners, uh, Uniproton, a uh, very lightweight kernel from open oil community itself, just like the ATOS. And we will have our uh, uh, strong partners, Artisred. And uh, in this release, we also try to integrate the initial uh, support of uh, a simple hypervisor, Geohouse. And uh, in other areas and in software bars, we will do uh, op perform performance optimizations and uh, we will have basic uh, Bluetooth support. And the uh, rows too, as I said, we, in this release, we will implement the basic support of lightweight loss environment. We will support the loss core and the loss base uh, corrections. And uh, LLVM, so this is a cooperation between, I mean, of all embedded and the C compiler. We will provide the image built by the LLVM to achieve. Right, the, and which is very attractive to, uh, for some applications. So this is uh, what we will have in the coming release. Okay, now comes to my final part, uh, the OS mixed uh, critical article deployment. And uh, first I want to make uh, some introduction about the, the background of this te technology. I mean, Taking a motion control system as an example, it was my research uh, field I mean, ten, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, it can be found in a lot of uh, uh, applications like robots, CNC machines. Uh, a typical motion control systems consist of three layers, the top layer uh, for the smart control uh, responsible for work like HMI, plane navigations. The middle layer, we call it uh, behavior layer, responsible for work like uh, trace, collision detect, states monitor, and, and the bottom layer, uh, we call it the real-time real control layer, responsible for work like motor, server control, sensors, IO, and actuators. And, and uh, you can see that different layers have, uh, have different requirements on flexibility and uh, feature richness and the real time. And in, in the past, to implement such a motion control system, we need a PCP level system. I mean, I mean that you can see that one application processor running Linux for smart control, then you have one microcontroller running ATOS for behavior layers, one or several DSPs, DSPs or microcontrollers running ATOS or even bare metal for the for real-time control, like the control for uh, motors. I mean, each part has its own memory, IO in the communication and the and these part, different paths are connected on board paths like I2C, SPI, and UART. And the problems of, of this PCB level system are, I mean, hardware complexity, hardware complexity, like several chips and you can see that there are several chips and corresponding memory, power, peripherals, and clock. And uh, low communication efficiency because uh, you, you have limited channels and, the, and these channels have, have limited rates. And the low fl software flexibility. I mean, you know, we you know that the software are located in different RAM chip and or flash chip, and uh, difficult to, to develop and maintain because you know different runtime are involved and the different flow. So, thanks to the Moore's law, I mean, the ability, density, and the integration level of hardware become are uh, becoming better and better now. Now the previous PCB level system now can be implemented in one system of chip, uh, such as the Siding's Archer I mentioned before. So you can find the application processors, you can find the real-time processors, you can find the 
hardware accelerators and FPGA integrate together. But uh, the fast evolution, evolution of hardware also brings challenge for software. You know, for example, how does software fully utilize the total hardware resource of such a complex hardware systems? And further, even further, how does the software define the hardware features? Okay, this is the background. Now coming to the uh, MCS, the mixed critical RDT systems. Uh, so, so for the mixed critical critical RDT system, which in my viewpoint uh, also in OpenAI's viewpoint is a future trend of embedded systems, and uh, there are. I, I want to show two paths to show this trend. So path one from distributed to centralized uh, motion control system is a, a good example. And it, it can be easily extended to the smart vehicle case. Well, now in this case, in this application case, the MCS system is very hot and, uh, and it can be proved by the fact, it can be proved by the fact that uh, in, in in cars, I mean, the distributed ECU architecture is evolving to the centralized storm controller, zoom controller. So in industrial IoT applications, the story of virtual PLC or cloud PLC, well, well the traditional distributed PLC controllers are deployed in edge, even in cloud is another good example. So pass two, uh, the evolution of a single mode device, and, and you know, with the support of hardware, and more and more features are added in one node. For example, connection over the over the hell update and especially AI. So, but in such a system, the QA or quality assurance of original features like uh, real time reliability should be kept. So, for example, the robot arm which equipped uh, a camera becomes AI smart robot, uh, AI smart robot arm, and the more and the in drone. So we can find more and more sensors, camera, laser, sound, that and and other sensors are added in one drone, and the drone system is becoming more and more complex. So, so the so let's discuss or go a little further to the MCS. I mean, this is the architecture of uh, MCS. I mean, it is based on multiple SOC, heterogeneous or homogeneous. Then we have a uh, uh, behind. Be about hardware, we have an embedded flexible foundation, which can be based on utilization technology or PE technology. Then we have, a, uh, uh, from the top, we have a multi, multiple domains and multi, different domains running different OS, Linux, RTOS, and we use a, a mix, mix deploying the framework, which clear Mika to connect, to connect different domains. So, uh, 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 for for the mixed criticality systems here, so in fact the word criticality, I mean many main means safety, but uh, in our viewpoint, I mean this word can be also extended to other index like uh, real time security and the uh, the power. So from the and from the viewpoint of of oil embedded, I mean to in, to implement such an Mixed critical systems, and there are three phases: uh, deployment plus quarantine or isolation plus. Uh, so, so we want we do imp we do mixed OS deployment first, then to implement the resource quarantine isolation with the help with the help of hardware, and finally uh, to achieve better resource utilization. Through the scheduling, so in fact, in open oil, our approach is a mixed approach of academic concern and industrial concern. I mean that in academic, more focus are on the mixed criticality scheduling uh, of shared resource, which comes from, I mean, or upgraded from the traditional real time scheduling, uh, but uh, it, ha it has less focus on the quarantine or strongly uh, isolation. And, but uh, on the other side, in industries, more focus are uh, on the time and the space uh, isolation to guarantee uh, the criticality, like uh, features like uh, real-time safety reliability. So, resource 
in industrial applications, resources are always static or located and uh, isolated. Then you have then you have then you will have a problem like the re low resource utilization. Okay. Okay, I. So, open Euler will start its exploration for the MCS from phase one. I mean, here is multi OS mixed criticality deployment. Here we, we the criticality refers to real time level. So, uh, in our practice, uh, the multi OS mixed criticality deployment there are three challenges to be handled. So. Number one is the multi OS integration. So, and we want to simplify, simplify the integration of multi OS. And here we, so we use uh, system TTS, uh, here TTS means device tree to describe resource allocation of different OS and their relation. Then we use the integrated build system to build multi OS in a unified way and to generate an integrated image. So all of this work is based on the Yakto systems. Then with a unified um, or integrated image, then we go to number two, try to handle the number two challenge, uh, the effic efficient cross OS or domain communications. You know, as, a, as I said before, uh, the whole system consists of different, different domains or different runtime working together. So the cross OS domain Across do, cross domain uh, communication is very critical and it's the backbone. So here we use a, a what IO based uh, lock free shared memory based mechanism as the foundation, which is based on OpenMP. Then and then the front end of application is abstract and the hardware independent. And the back end, uh, there are there may be multiple back ends in it, and uh, they are very flexible. And it can be based on soft owning based. It also can be a hardware, software code based. And uh, uh, as I said just now, uh, all we, we do this work on OpenMP. So, and with efficient cross OS communication, then we go to the next challenge, the service oriented deployment. So on, we want to implement the service oriented Deployment where well, different OS provides its best fit service. For example, a Linux is provides system management, network, file system management, and Atos provides real time control, real time network, and real time comp compute. So, as I said, as I want to mention it again, so in our approach, uh, Linux is, uh, is the centric. It defines the standard interface of managing, communicate, debug of life cycle. So this is for phase one, our work in phase one. So that's what, what we did in our last release. Um, I mean, the 2209, uh, also the software architecture of uh, Mika. Okay. Uh, you know that in Mika, there are, there are two paths, the Linux side and the Atos side. So in Linux side, there are also two sub, sub, sub components. The user space component and the kernel space component. Uh, in the in, in kernel space I mean, here, kernel framework and the kernel framework only does necessary work like the interrupt management because you have we are relying on the interprocessor interrupt to do to do notifications and the uh, the bottom bottom half the bottom part of life cycle management and the necessary memory mapping and also we. We we are design a uh, fast pass for some performance requirement for some performance requirement areas, and now we support it on we support uh, uh, on ARM sixty four architecture. Now we are all trying to extend uh, the support to other architecture like x eighty six x five and or uh, even heterogeneous hardware. Then in user space, and I, I, you can see that most of work of Mika are implemented in user framework. Now we we based on OpenMP, we we implement basic life cycle management, and then we have we we have a, a simple endpoint framework, and then we implement uh, basic support of a stream, RPC, and other and, and uh, communications, and the, there are more communication mechanisms will be 
involved in the future. Now we have we we, we implement uh, the basic uh, the PTY pseudo PTY service, and uh, now we are working on socket and the file service. Okay, then we in uh, in application we have uh, we implement the integration of screen, and we are working on GDB client, and uh, we are also provide interface for user defined applications. So this is the uh, inner side. For the other other side, because you know that OpenMP is a uh, uh, OpenMP is a uh, very, I mean, easy to port framework, so it can be easily integrated into different authors like Zephyr, like Agile Thread. So in Zephyr, we we implement the UART endpoint. With UART endpoint, you can easily to I mean, to share a share service or console service or log service to the real site, and uh, this part are uh, Feature that we will implement in the future. I mean, uh, in Mika, in our current implementation, Mika, I mean, we are based on the shared memory and uh, and uh, into processor interrupt. Now, uh, all the system resources are, are allocated through the device tree. As I said, the system device tree, including CPU, memory, and the memory mapped I/O. Now you can see that uh, in this in this case, we allocated the three. Course to the business uh, clear open embedded and the uh, and corresponding memory. Then we implement we allocate one core and the corresponding memory for the authors. Then we have a area named share memory to share information between two OS. Okay. So this is the software architecture of Vika currently. Okay. So finally, uh, a summary. <laughs> A summary. So, Open OIDA is a ubiquitous open operating system for the digital infrastructure covering cloud, server, edge, and embedded. And Open OIDA embedded is a unicentric comprehensive embedded software platform based on Open OIDA's ecosystem and the community. And uh, uh, mixed critical IDK system, uh, we think that is the future trend of embedded system. And we develop uh, our own solutions named Mika. It includes three phase deployment, then isolation, then scheduling. Okay, that's all. That's my sharing today. So I want to say welcome to Open Oila and welcome to Open Oila Embedded. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Wayne. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and insights with us today. I, I noticed that you highlighted Mika, which I believe is one of the fundamental aspects of Open Oila Embedded. Um, and later we can go over the other highlights of Open Euler Embedded. Okay. So now let's move on to uh, Jia Gong, and you're now free to share your screen. My topic is uh, Restyle is a new opportunity for AOT. As we all know, Restyle is an open source instruction set architecture. Uh, based on the principle of the reduced instruction set, uh, uh, we re represent the 50 generation risk, which is the core specification of software and uh, uh, hardware. Uh, the risk okay. the risk file. Uh, the risk file is uh, uh, totally free. Uh, but uh, if you choose to use the risk file core on one of the companies which add, uh, uh, add values, you need to pay a license fee. In addition, uh, the intellectual property rights of uh, X86 uh, and uh, ARM and other architectures belong to a specific company. They cannot be modified and extended uh, according to the user's ideas on the instruction set architecture. And the modifications uh, made on the torsion cannot be maintained, uh, maintained uh, by the com community. Especially in the OT field, we all know uh, OT field uh, include uh, different uh, application scenarios. In this case, the processors uh, need to be trimmed compared to the traditional instruction set architectures, such as X86 uh, 
86 and ARM that cannot be modified, uh, this valve can be tailored due to its openness uh, because it is a stability. This, has, this valve has a wide range of uh, tapped icons of IoT. Uh, which, uh, as shown in the table, uh, this file uh, is a modular architecture. Uh, it, uh, it, it has a different parts can be struggled together in a modular way. This file instruction set is a computation of a basic uh, instruction set, standard extension instruction set, and a customer uh, extension instruction set. Uh, the risk file boards can be got has a different uh, computations for uh, instruction sets, as we show in the table. Uh, uh, in the, some libraries, uh, such as OpenBLAS and OpenCV, uh, it has uh, a lot of um, matrix calculations, so it needs uh, uh, vector extension instructions uh, and other uh, uh, application scenario has uh, uh, others uh, uh, extension instructions. Uh, this file has uh, a very uh, loudly uh, software and hardware ecology. As a present, the hardware software ecology is in full swing. Uh, the risk file. Uh, hardware ecosystem uh, includes the risk valve core and uh, risk valve board. The risk valve core uh, mainly include, uh, includes the Alibaba Xuantie uh, series, uh, C5 series, uh, Andes core series in Taiwan. Uh, and the risk valve boards include the D1 Noja board, C5 uh, unmatched board, and the Star 5 Vision 5 series board. Uh, and etc. Uh, the this, uh, the risk five software in college, uh, ecosystem is also developing uh, vigorously, uh, supporting the full uh, software. Uh, operating system is a support Debian, Federal, Ubuntu, uh, and the real time uh, operating system is support Ali. Alios since uh, Freatos, RT Thread, SEL4, and uh, and others. The kernel is a support Linux kernel and others uh, include the uh, built root and the Yocto project that uh, build the embedded uh, Linux versions. Um, and the machine learning and the AI, the compilers and the libraries and the security, uh, the simulations and the bootloader uh, is all supported in uh, Respective ecosystems. So, as we mentioned, uh, the AOT application scenario, the, com the computation of this towards the AI and the IoT uh, focus on using the AI capabilities to process uh, the data uh, generated and collected by the IoT system. Uh, therefore, the AIoT uh, means. Uh, we, we could use the machine learning model in AI systems. Uh, the meanwhile, the uh, connectivities of IoT systems and the data transmissions in the internet. Uh, so th this is the uh, core uh, capabilities of AIoT. Uh, the AIoT uh, uh, is widely used in various uh, uh, scenarios such as to be uh, the industrial level internet, uh, internet of things to see the customer level uh, internet of things and to G, uh, the public level internet of things that uh, facilities uh, uh, can be measured in government. Uh, so we call it 2G. Uh, uh, so, in, uh, so in this architecture, it includes the smart uh, variables, uh, autonomous uh, driving, start manufacturing, Start, uh, smart cities, intellect, uh, intelligent uh, home, smart architecture. Uh, so it all needs uh, the risk valve uh, characters. The risk valve uh, instruction set architecture has the under advantage of the low power consumption, low cost, uh, open source modularization, 
uh, simplicity uh, small and fast speed. Uh, uh, it has the uh, fragmentation characterized uh, of requirements and needs to be customers according to the different uh, application scenarios. Uh, so we say uh, the risk five is very consistent with the uh, the customer's features of AOT scenarios. Uh, for now, we say uh, a lot of applications for RISC-5 in AOT. Uh, for example, the Huawei uh, released the high uh, RISC-5 uh, uh, RISC board for uh, Harmony OS, and uh, uh, Green Wheels released uh, uh, JP9. Uh, this is the minimal size uh, of the risk file board. Uh, the real uh, lab released uh, uh, Pico, Pico Rio uh, is a risk file uh, small board com computer. And we all know C file uh, re released uh, 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 a match the uh, board that we always use. Uh, so uh, in the uh, in the twenty uh, twenty five, uh, uh, we we say uh, the risk file will command the uh, twenty uh, twenty eight percent of our uh, IoT market. Uh, but uh, the risk file and the IoT also uh, have very challenges in uh, operating systems. Uh, risk files modular instruction set uh, especially pose challenges for operating system building. Uh, we say, uh, for example, the commercial uh, building. Uh, so we say in the future, uh, we, uh, we should deal with the challenges of uh, the non-uniform uh, risk file board standards uh, and the customer uh, ICA. Uh, and the building of the intelligent uh, operating system for AI capabilities. Uh, therefore, the operating system for risk of AOT needs to have strong uh, customer abilities uh, by analyzing uh, the, the user uh, support, uh, uh, support the uh, software list uh, board uh, configurations and uh, AI framework and uh, applications, the system building uh, the uh, images that uh, should be very quickly uh, built it, uh, and uh, the started the minimal uh, runtime environment to improve the application of AOT uh, application scenarios. Okay, the second challenge is come from the modular IC architecture. Uh, uh, we see in the uh, in the graph, uh, for example, the library A, uh, it contains uh, 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 the matrix calculations that can be accelerated, uh, uh, accelerated by uh, way extension IC, uh, and also have the uh, SHA-1 and uh, uh, hash, uh, ha hash functions uh, that can be accepted uh, by K extension ISA. Uh, so in this uh, scenario, uh, uh, if the library A uh, is a commercial library and uh, is a compiled, uh, we don't know uh, where to run at the compile time. Uh, so uh, the, the library A can be compiled to the uh, multi-binary versions uh, to uh, to build in the operation to package uh, in the uh, operating system images. Uh, so uh, therefore, the operating system images uh, will be very uh, redundant. So uh, in this uh, situation, we need a, a, a solution in operating system that can be uh, compiled once. Uh, run on the uh, different uh, risk file platforms uh, and uh, meanwhile uh, takes the advantage of the modular uh, instruction set. 
Uh, the last uh, challenge, I mean, in the RIS-5 and uh, ART is uh, AR terminal acceler uh, acceleration. Uh, 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 that means uh, the AI chips uh, that is uh, can for example, uh, is an uh, AI core processor chips uh, on the uh, RIS-5 board. Uh, if we run it on the RISVA platform, uh, we need to port uh, the kernel drivers uh, of uh, the AR chips, uh, the exceeding, uh, acceleration levels uh, for the AR chips and the AI framework and the uh, APP. Uh, so it means we, uh, we, we port the huge code uh, to, uh, from the ARM uh, architecture to RISVA architecture, uh, so as the other AI uh, core, uh, core processor chips uh, does the same work. Uh, in addition, uh, in the future, uh, it is also necessary to use the capabilities of RISC-5 SMD uh, instructions, such as uh, Wei uh, extensions and P extensions, especially. Um, Reference to ARM architecture, uh, the ARM use uh, the ARM NN uh, and uh, uh, synthesis NN to accelerate uh, to accelerate AI uh, terminal calculation. Uh, on the ARM platform, the AI uh, applications uh, are uh, using ARM NN uh, are tens and hundreds of times higher. Uh, than the general purpose uh, processor of uh, uh, the AI pro, uh, performance. Uh, so I think the RIS-5 uh, also needs a runtime free framework. Uh, it's very uh, like uh, to the ARM NN and the CMC uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that is uh, my share uh, of the uh, this file for the AOT. Uh, I think uh, this file is uh, uh, definitely uh, all an opportunity for AOT application scenario. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jiagong. Um, you just provided us uh, the general overview of the uh, primary features of RISC five and um, the operating system needs for AIoT. So uh, in the free discussion session, I'm confident that we'll have an in-depth discussion about your subject. Um, so um, last but not least, Dr. Han will enlighten us on the world of RT Threat OS and how it is essential to the embedded system. So uh, next is Dr. Han, please share your screen. Okay, I can see your screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, well, uh, let's get started. Uh, uh, hi, uh, I'm uh, Han Wu, also known as Wuhan Studio on GitHub. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Exeter uh, in the UK. Uh, in the following 15 minutes, uh, I will introduce Artist Lens, a real time operating system. Uh, maybe it's more intuitive to show you a short demo first. Uh, this is Artist Red running in a simulator. Uh, if I zoom in a little bit, uh, this is the uh, command line interface so that we can interact uh, with the operating system. Uh, if you are familiar with Linux, uh, here we have uh, Ubuntu. Uh, in Linux, we can use the command free to check the memory usage. You can also use the same command in RT thread. Uh, say, for example, uh, we can see uh, the total memory and the use memory. Uh, there is also a file system. Uh, in Linux, you can use the PWD to see the current working directory. Uh, currently, we are in the home directory. We can also use the same command in Arch thread. So if I use PWD here, uh, this represents the root directory. Uh, you can use tab to see all the commands available. Uh, well, maybe let's try something more interesting. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this is uh, Ubuntu. Uh, so we have a cow saying hello Ubuntu. We can also use the same command in Artisan. Uh, 
let's say, no copy spam. Uh, now we have a code saying hello RT threads. So the same program runs on both Linux and RT threads. Uh, as you may have already noticed, we even have Python here. So let's try Python in RT thread. Uh, actually, this is micro Python or microcontrollers. Uh, if you are familiar with Python, uh, we can import a library using import. And we can print out some messages using the function print. Uh, yeah, and of course, we can return to the terminal using the function uh, So this is how we use uh, our thread. Uh, let's move back a short demo. Let's move back to the slides. Uh, actually, there are three different versions of our thread: the nano version, the standard version, and smart version. Uh, in the previous demo, I used the standard version of our thread. Well, the nano version, uh, as its name suggests, is it is small. Uh, it takes roughly three kilobytes of flag and two kilobytes of memory uh, to run on microcontrollers. While the standard version includes more features such as a device file system, a socket abstraction layer, and et cetera. Uh, both nano version and standard version targets at middle to low end microcontrollers, uh, such as uh, this one, uh, if you like, look at the screen. Uh, uh, while the smart, uh, the smart version targets at high-end system on chips uh, that has memory management, management unit, or MMU, uh, such as uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, you can also check the documentation of different versions uh, on the official website. Uh, this is a documentation center. Uh, we have documentations for standard version, nano version, and smart version. Uh, you can also check the source code on GitHub. Uh, the master branch uh, maintains the code for the standard version. Uh, there is a separate branch uh, for smart version. Uh, in the future, uh, the smart branch will be merged into the master branch. Uh, so now you know that there are three different versions of RT thread. Uh, in the next slide, I will introduce each version one by one. Uh, the first one, uh, the nano version, uh, even though it is pretty small, it supports all the most popular inter-thread communication tools, such as server, event, mutex, mailbox, and message queue. Uh, it also supports different CPU architectures, such as ARM and RISC-V. Uh, as you can see here, uh, running two threads uh, takes roughly four kilobytes of flash and less than two kilobytes of memory. Uh, it is extremely small and reliable. Uh, the next one is a standard version. Uh, as I mentioned before, the standard version includes more features such as key value database, USB stack, device file system, uh, Wi-Fi manager, and et cetera. Uh, it also provides socket as abstraction layer and the POSIX layer. Uh, so the Linux command uh, applications runs on our thread as well uh, so that you can write uh, applications that can run across operating systems. Uh, when I started learning RT Thread uh, roughly five years ago, uh, I was amazed by the Software Package Center. Uh, in Linux, it is pretty natural to use a Software Package Manager to install softwares, but it's pretty interesting to use a package manager for microcontrollers. Uh, so for example, uh, if you go to the uh, Software Package Center, uh, we have a Software Package Manager for RT Thread. Uh, there are over 600 packages available here. Uh, we, have, we have different kinds of software, IoT, peripherals, system, programming language. Uh, I showed you how to use MicroPython, uh, tools, miscellaneous, multimedia, security, AI, uh, and oh, Arduino. Oh, well, uh, RT Threads also supports some existing Arduino packages, uh, mostly provided by Adafruit. Uh, and the last one, signal processing and control. Uh, well, actually, this is new to me. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, well, of PID and common filter. So we have different kinds of software packages in uh, the software package center. Uh, uh, let's move on to the next one, the smart version. Uh, 
As I mentioned before, the smart version targets at high-end system enclaves that have uh, man memory management units or MMU, uh, such as Raspberry Pi. Uh, it is a it uses a microkernel architecture. Uh, for Linux kernel, it includes the device driver uh, and file system and etc., making it relatively large, several megabytes. While the RT Thread Smart is a microkernel, uh, it only contains basic analogies, making it very small. Uh, it requires only 500 kilobytes. Uh, it also supports user space processes as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can try RT Thread on Raspberry Pi. Uh, now that you know there are three different versions of RT Thread, nano version, standard version, and smart version, you may ask, well, how can I use RT Thread on my hardware? Well, uh, currently RT Thread supports all uh, the most popular instruction set architectures with five ARM, Mix, and uh, etc. Uh, you can find the full list on the official website. Uh, so if you uh, go to the supported board, you can see a full list below, and the list is still growing fast. Uh, of course, you can also check the source code directly. Uh, if you navigate into the BSP fold, you can see all the uh, development boards supported by RT Thread. Uh, well, you may say, uh, here we have so many folders. This looks scary. Uh, I don't know where to start with. Well, uh, in this way, uh, I would suggest using RT Thread Studio, uh, the IDE or Integrated Development Environment. Uh, it has a built-in simulator, so you can use RT Thread without a real hardware, and it's community free. Uh, in the previous demo, I already showed you how to run RT Thread in a simulator. Uh, this is a built-in simulator. Um, and uh, we can also uh, add some software packages directly from the, uh, the IDE. Uh, let's, uh, so this is the built-in software package center. Uh, so for example, if I would like to use Python or actually MicroPython in my project, uh, I can search for Python and add it to my project. Uh, I've already added it to my project. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, I added four uh, packages here. If you press Control S to save the configurations, uh, the Artist Red Studio will clone all the source code of different uh, software packages into your working directory or working space. Uh, maybe I can show you how to create a project from scratch. Uh, so if you right click here and choose new project, uh, you can create a nano project or a standard project. Uh, you can create the project based on a microcontroller or on a specific board. So for example, I can choose different uh, microcontrollers from here, and I can choose uh, different development boards. Uh, so this is how we create a project. You can also add more development boards through SDK Manager. Uh, this is the SDK Manager. So as you can see here, uh, the RT Thread Studio supports quite a lot of development boards. Uh, you can also download uh, the code chain, the PCC code chain from the SDK Manager directly. Uh, so this is a brief introduction uh, to RT Thread Studio. Uh, 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 as I introduced before, uh, there are over 600 software packages available uh, in the Software Package Center. Mm, these are the most popular components provided by RT Thread. Uh, the command line interface, microblog, uh, microlog, <laughs> microtext, system view, cortex M backtrace. Uh, memory performance, just to name a few, RDB, KDB, and ADB. Uh, uh, yeah, RT Thread also supports robot operating system, or ROS. Uh, if you're familiar with robotic applications, ROS is widely adopted in uh, the development of robotic applications. Uh, just in case, if you're not familiar with ROS, here's a short demo. Uh, uh, I will introduce ROS using one of my previous projects. Uh, my research focuses on real-time adversarial attacks against learning models. 
Uh, say for example, this project uses ROS or robot operating system. Uh, uh, this is a simulated environment, gazebo. Uh, the gazebo simulator provided by ROS. Uh, here we have a simulated robot. Uh, on the left side, you can see the unit captured by the virtual camera. Uh, uh, this is how we attack an object detection model. Uh, as you can see here, from the perspective of human eyes, we know that there isn't any project here, right? But uh, after generating a human unperceivable perturbations, the object detection model detects traffic signs everywhere. Uh, this is how we attack an object detection system in real time. Uh, let's move back to slides. Uh, so you can also use ROS on RT thread uh, for middle to low end microcontrollers, you can use ROS serial and micro ROS. Uh, ROS serial is designed for ROS version one, uh, while micro ROS is designed for ROS version two. Uh, while for some high end systems on chips that can run RT thread, RT thread smart, uh, you can use the full version of ROS. Uh, say for example, you can use RT thread smart on Raspberry Pi. Uh, it supports the full version of ROS. Uh, maybe I can show you uh, using another project. Uh, in this project, we attack an object detection system using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a man in the middle hardware attack against object detection. Uh, say, for example, uh, here we have a USB camera and a detection system. Uh, we have a Raspberry Pi in the, in, in the middle. The Raspberry Pi reads the image from the USB camera, inject the perturbation, or apply the attack, and simulates a virtual camera to the operating system. Uh, the operating system has no idea the camera is under attack. Uh, after injecting the perturbation, uh, as you can see here, the object detection model detects a lot of different objects everywhere. Uh, this is how we use a Raspberry Pi to attack an object action system in real time. Uh, so we should really think about uh, is learning secure for robots. Uh, so this is a brief introduction to ROS and RT-Thread. Uh, if you find RT-Thread interesting and helpful, uh, here is university program that provides some hands-on labs, online courses, and training. Uh, these are some <laughs> pictures. Uh, we also have some books that can help you to learn RT threads. Uh, of course, feel free to create a pull request on the GitHub repo so that you can uh, collaborate with the community. Um, RT thread was created in 2006, so it has been roughly 17 years. Uh, more features will be included in the future. Uh, so uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I, I think this is very intriguing and an overview about your presentation. You showed us um, the open source RT thread operating system and its ecosystem. And the whole presentation and showcase is very clear and eye-opening. So um, thank you so much again. And um, okay, that concludes today's presentation session. And uh, next, there will be a round of open discussion. Mm, so um, to begin with, I'd like to ask three of you uh, the first question. So um, uh, how do you envision the future of the embedded industry and how might Open Euler project contribute, it, contribute to it? So um, you can start your um, sharing your opinions and suggestions now. Okay, just uh, let me start first, okay? As okay. I said in my presentation, uh, I, think, uh, I think that uh, the, the mixed critical RDT system is a very important trend, future trend of impact system, because you know we can find it in a lot of areas, uh, especially in recently very hot, but mostly in electronics, right? You know that the system is becoming more and more complex and, uh, and we, uh, we need uh, uh, good UIs, we need good uh, uh, entertainment systems, and uh, we have AIs, right? We need automotive driving. But you know, for cars, there are 
typical in budget systems. So you have to guarantee the safety and the real time, especially you know for the EV cars, right? So you should you need to real time control it. So uh, the total system is becoming more and more complex. But uh, what is different with uh, ID system is that uh, the embedded system is a system that to interact with the physical world, right? So you know, for IT system, you just uh, handle the data, right? Okay, you you browse it, you process data, but uh, what, uh, but for embedded system, okay, it really interact with the physical world, which means that if you make an error, it will bring a very disaster result, right? So. So I think that uh, is a trend. Uh, it's a very obvious trend uh, for the uh, embedded systems. So, 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 based on this consideration, that's why we open all your community. That uh, you know, it's, it starts from server and the cloud, right? Then extend it to edge and the embedded and uh, the you embedded. Uh, uh, areas we, we in the open all embedded. As I said, it's not a, a Linux. Itself, it's not only Linux. It has a comprehensive platform, right? Although I mean, we have to admit, right? Because system is becoming more and more complex, so we need a general system, general operating systems like Linux. But uh, we still have have other components to help the Linux to implement I mean, strong constraints on real time. That's why we have the Mika framework. That's why we 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 set good uh, cooperation with uh, Atos. Partners like Artist Red, like Zephyr, right? So this is this is one trend. Another trend is in hardware. As I said, that hardware become becomes more and more complex, and the, the typical or traditional architecture like 18.6, like x 18.6 and the ARM. I mean, we know that uh, in 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 the PC era, I mean, x 18.6 is uh, very popular. It's the winner, right? It it fits well for the uh, needs of uh, personal computer uh, servers, but but uh, you, as we see that uh, in the mobile era, right? Okay, we need uh, low power, we, but we, we still we need efficient uh, computing. So that's why ARM wins. You know, as we know that uh, you know x86 is not giving up this area because it's a big, very big market, but uh, the result is ARM still wins in mobile area. Okay. The next error, maybe AIoT error, right? We need more diversities. We need more freedoms, right? So I think that that's why is risk why is so hot. I mean, recently, right? Especially in the area of uh, embedded systems, right? I, I, in my personal viewpoint, that uh, we, we we can see that uh, definitely uh, risk five architecture can compete with the uh, ARM architecture and uh, even x86. Architecture, right? So that's why open oil embedded and open oil community embrace risk five architecture. We have good cooperation with Professor Yu and and, and and his organizations, right? So we want open oil becomes becomes also a, a very important platform for risk five, right? So this is my viewpoint. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Wayne. And uh, do you have any other opinions, Dr. Han or Dr. Yu? Uh, well, uh, maybe uh, from my perspective, uh, uh, in the previous presentation, I remember Open Rula uh, provides a consistent pro platform uh, that can build a Linux distribution and real time operating system. Uh, you know, for embedded systems, the whole system becomes more and more complicated in recent years. Uh, say, for example, for the autonomous driving, it requires a Linux to run object detection, and it requires a real-time operating system uh, to control the hardware. So the whole system becomes more and more complicated. Well, usually we build uh, the system separately. <laughs> we first build a Linux distribution uh, to run object detection and use a real-time operating system, uh, such as Zephyr and Artist Red to control the hardware. Well, the Open Eula can provide uh, a platform that builds everything uh, automatically. Uh, this is very great, so that we don't have to do everything separately. We can use the same platform to build Linux and real-time operating system. Uh, so this is, so I believe Open Eula will help 
uh, will make it much easier to develop robotic applications uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I am very, uh, I'm a very great with the uh, docs inside. Uh, the risk five, uh, I'm very happy to see the overall adapter to risk five architecture. Uh, the risk five needs to complete the uh, software ecosystem around it. Uh, the ecosystem components are diverse, uh, uh, include from the, uh, the low level firmware and boat loader and the operating system kernel applications uh, and others. Uh, so uh, the, the huge of uh, software ecosystem uh, will ensure the success of uh, RISC-5 architecture. I think it's, it's a very key uh, key reason uh, to, to success of RISC-5 architecture. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. And since you mentioned uh, RISC-5 architecture, um, I, I, it reminds me of another question. So. Um, in what ways can uh, RISC V architectures uh, to, uh, be used to optimize uh, the performance and the power consumption in IoT devices? Uh, do you have any ideas to share? Okay, um, I'm trying to uh, answer this question. Uh, generally, uh, uh, to the uh, energy cons uh, consumption uh, of each uh, 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 for example, AI chip on the uh, CPU is very high. Uh, so it, it will lead to the decline of the overall uh, endurance. Uh, the RISC-5 is uh, very suitable uh, for the different design uh, and the application of processors. Uh, developers uh, can uh, fix the tailor uh, the process uh, according to the user uh, requirements. Uh, in addition, uh, is uh, the total number of RISC-5 standard instructions are not more than 50. Uh, so uh, uh, so the, the RISC-5 core area is very small uh, and the corresponding power consumption is lower uh, than the ARM architecture. Uh, it can achieve different uh, uh, options of AI components uh, with extremely uh, low energy con consumption. Uh, and other uh, to the performance, I think uh, the IoT uh, is very extensive and uh, uh, fragmented. Uh, the chips need to be designed uh, for thousands of uh, application uh, scenarios and uh, cases. Uh, so the scalable of architecture becomes the key of the IoT uh, uh, the, the LT requirements. Uh, compared to the uh, ARM architecture, for example, the real self uh, has the advantage of uh, uh, um, extending the uh, IC uh, and adding the customer instructions. Uh, that means we should, uh, we could use very few uh, IC uh, to to implic uh, to achieve the same uh, functions uh, compared to ARM, for example, uh, it will use uh, uh, many instructions. Uh, so uh, that is to say, uh, in the RISC-V, uh, we optimize the performance. Uh, in summary, uh, design a very uh, property. Uh, I say it's important for RISC-V to uh, optimize performance and uh, power consumption. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do you have any other questions or? Um... Okay, um, for last question, I want to make a supplement. Why, I mean, this why is very important for the AIT era because, you know, the biggest advantage of risk five is its openness. So it's a very ideal architecture for the domain specific design. I mean, for, for domain specific architecture, right? You know, for some commercial architecture, like x86 and ARM, uh, these commercial companies has very tight control on these architectures. So you, you cannot 
try, uh, modify it. If you want to modify it, you should get the license first. But uh, the open architecture, so risk file is open, right? You can you can easily modify it. You can take a lot of reference from different projects, academic research, right? So we, we, with this um, advantage, it, it means that uh, it's easily can do some work like uh, hardware and you know, software co-design and co optimization, you know, uh, to implement, uh, you know, that uh, to implement uh, good performance or good uh, uh, low energy, the best way is to use pure hardware, right? Everything is implemented hardware, even though uh, the system feature or the application features, right? Because everything is hardware. But the problem is that uh, it means if everything is fixed, is fixed in hardware, it means that uh, uh, low flexibility, you cannot change it, in, right? So, so uh, uh, a better way is that, okay, we design the system with a uh, software and a hardware code design way. And uh, before, I, I, as I remembered 10 years ago, I mean, I, because I do some academic research in this field, uh, okay, we we have this problem or, or, or difficulties. Okay, if I want to deep change, we, we want to define our own architecture or even own our own ISA, but uh, we can't do it because there is no good platforms, right? So after uh, since uh, 2016, I mean, uh, when risk become more and more hot, I think that I find a good solution, especially for academic research. Now you can easily to implement it. A, a, a customized core or customized hardware to implement a good uh, uh, performance or good uh, uh, energy utilization, right? So that's very good. But all, but uh, meanwhile, besides this advantage, you also uh, bring all, you know everything has a cost, right? You get uh, uh, openness, you get flexibility. But what you pay? I mean, the potential risk is the fragmentation because you know if everyone can change it. Because if, uh, that means there are a lot of versions, a lot of variants. Uh, you cannot uh, fully uh, reuse it because reusability is a very, very key feature of modern uh, uh, computer science, both in hardware and software, right? But uh, but I think that this problems an uh, obstacle can be conquered. I mean, because we have a risk five. Uh, foundations, right? We have a, uh, we, we, and the people are willing to cooperate than years ago, right? So that's, that's for me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and well, a last, uh, in, in the last part, I want to, uh, may I ask Dr. Wang to demonstrate the, the ways how developers, if they want to join our uh, Open Euler Embedded uh, project, or if they want to contribute, how can they contribute to the project? I know we have an official website that uh, have different uh, uh, different special interest groups and the uh, introductions of different groups, and uh, we have repos of our project with very detailed information and uh, other uh, contact information. So uh, could you please show us uh, how, how uh, contributors could join our project? Okay, that's a, a very good question. Also very challenging question. You know that uh, uh, in the worldwide, the mature flow is, uh, I mean, in the open source community, like the Linux Foundation, like Apache Foundation, right? So uh, mature, Flows, lots of documentations, tutorials, videos in YouTube, right? So, but uh, in China, it's a challenge because Open Euler is the first one of such a big community, right? Such a big open source platform. So, so it means everything we faced is new in China. And uh, although we we can get some experience from the worldwide organizations, but uh, still a lot of problems. And currently. Uh, so I so I want so it, uh, it's founded it's founded in 2019 right uh, by Huawei, but I, I want to say that after it's donated to Open Atom Foundation, so it's uh, also a vendor nature community like other uh, famous community like Linux Foundation Apache Foundation. So so Open Euler welcomes all kinds of contributions, and uh, uh, I want to say after more than three years growing. There are already 
different force working together in open oil, like artist Red, mm-hmm. like uh, Chinese uh, Science Academy and the Software Institute, right? And the universities, the personal developers. I, I, I already showed these numbers uh, in my presentations. So, so I, I want to make a further uh, introduction. I mean, for hardware companies, I mean, they can provide hardware optimizations, compatibility certifications, and the new features in enablement. For example, uh, if, if, if you take a look of a recent uh, change in open oil, we have a good a cooperation with uh, Intel, right? I mean, Intel's latest uh, hardware features are already pushed to open oil. I mean, for all vendors, they can do uh, their own release. I mean, commercial distributions and build build up business model. For example, we have Keen, which is a, a very famous uh, Linux vendors. They have their own um, distributions. And even for Artist Red, I mean, you know, Artist Red is also backed up by a company, right? They are very strong in Artos, but uh, in fact, they also can uh, can have their own, I mean, Linux distributions, or for example, open oil embedded for Artist Red. But that's okay, no problem. I mean, for independent, uh, for independent software vendors, they can do their application application certifications. They can do their own full stack solution or clearings. I mean, okay, finally for normal users, I mean they can, I mean they can build characteristic institutions or release according to their needs. For example, I uh, I take a look of uh, Doctor Wu's I mean profile and uh, she's very strong. And I think they, if you can spend some time, you can I mean customize your own institutions, right? And also, I mean, for normal user developer, they can uh, raise requirements, issues in open, oil, in open oil. So this is the good news of uh, uh, open mm-hmm. uh, in the community because, you know, we have an organization, we are, you have a website, you have IT system to support you to do this, right? That's very good. Uh, I mean, the best way to, I mean, to participate in the development of oil, like just, okay, you, you you go to the uh, Diki because we have uh, everything in Diki, and even uh, uh, oil website is a good, I mean, uh, a good port, you know, a good hub. You, know, you can find a lot of res- useful resources, and you also can uh, can find a lot of uh, useful video resources in our Bili Bili. Now, uh, thanks for the organization of the host, uh, we also try to be more internationalized. So we we want to. Globalization, right? So we, we, you know, you, you know, you, you, maybe everyone thinks funny. We all three Chinese, we all try to speak clear, talk about embedded in, in, in English. Maybe of, of course, maybe it's better with, with our native language, but it means our, 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 our mind for the globalization. We want mm-hmm. to attract more users, developers. You know, mm-hmm. open oil starts from China. But we want to it go to global, to a global uh, platform like uh, Debian, like uh, uh, Red Hat, like uh, Susi, right? So, so, uh, so I don't have uh, uh, some, I mean, uh, uh, quick tutorials for how to join. I mean, the best way is just use it and participate in it. Okay. 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 Thank you. And um, uh, I, I, I mean, I just. I wanted you to demonstrate our website, but um, uh, okay, so uh, let me uh, share my screen. And uh, since we have a very, very good uh, sick list, uh, which includes all of the uh, special interest groups of Open Euler and also includes Open Euler Embedded. So um, let me show my screen. Uh, can you now see my screen? Okay. Yeah, um, okay, so this is the official website of Open Euler, and we have uh, the uh, English version, Chinese version, and also uh, Russian version. And uh, we have different kinds of resources and tutorials and successful stories uh, on this website. And also the news uh, and upcoming events we will host. And uh, here you can see we have a sick, uh, sick list uh, if you open it, we can see all of the different uh, SIGs of Open Euler, which are all different areas of researches or uh, different areas, different domains of um, o- operating systems, and also uh, some kind of uh, 
different uh, domains such as big data, uh, computing, or AI. And if you uh, you you can just type here um, embedded. I think there is a yeah you can see sick embedded and. Um, there are the repos name, the SIG introduction, the mailing list, and uh, different repos of OpenEuler Embedded as well as its maintainers. Uh, so if you're interested in joining uh, a SIG or if you're interested in viewing all different uh, tutorials or documentations of OpenEuler, welcome to uh, just uh, log, uh, log on to our website and view uh, our resources. Okay, so this is what I want to uh, demonstrate. Yes, you are, it's, it's excellent. I mean, of all us, uh, of all sites, so very good um, hub to access of all us resources, right? So yeah. I, I think that this is a very good start point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, the uh, the other two guests, uh, Dr. Han or uh, Dr. Yu, do you have any other questions, or shall we um, stop from here today? Yeah, I think that's enough. And thank you. I mean, for your joining. Yes, it's a very good start, right? We discussed here because you know that. Uh, uh, I just repeat again: is uh, it one is this meetup? It's a start point to show our ambition for globalization, right? Even in fact, uh, you, we're just talking about technology we can just use in Chinese, but we want to attract uh, more users to join, right? Artist right is a good start, and uh, uh, risk five is also very hot. So that's we have this. And I finally, I want to thank you for the organization of the host. Really, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, also I want to mention that this is uh, the first time that we organize such kind of event, event to uh, welcome different uh, organizations, different developers uh, uh, from all over the world to join us. And we'll have the same kind of event uh, every other month. So um, if you're interested, you can just email us or leave messages at our social media to tell us what kind of subjects or what kind of topics are you interested in so that we can organize other uh, meetings or events in the coming year. So um, uh, thank you again to all of our distinguished guests to join us today. And uh, they all shared their insightful observations um, so um, I want to express my gratitude to everyone to come to this meetup today and uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, next time. So uh, thank you and enjoy your day today. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your day. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, thank, thank you for the invitation. Bye.